this idea that we're going to see Premier League chairman or EFL chairman or others that were connected with the game on uh, the, the, the regulatory panel is just cannot happen. In terms of the powers of the regulator, the regulator must have teeth, must have the ability to veto, must have the ability to step in on behalf of the fan and actually at times on behalf of the clubs. Because let's be clear, if the Premier League can't get some good projects through themselves because of their own constitution, you know, I, I, from what I believe at the start of the, uh, the, the talks post-COVID, there were quite a few clubs who wanted to bring forward a rescue package quickly, but couldn't do because some of the other clubs didn't want to bring it forward. So I know we talk quite negatively about the big six in the last few weeks, but I believe the big six were quite positive around bringing the rescue package forward for the rest of the game to get everyone off the back. But apparently the lower clubs in the league, if we want to call them that, uh, said that why should I be giving money to the owners of Stoke who are billionaires or other clubs? And they look at it with that sort of type of approach. It's really narrow minded. And to be honest with you, it's distasteful to listen to it in on the League Two calls when you hear it being reported back. And that's why sometimes I get angry on television. But for me, the five things that I've written down are it should safeguard the pyramid, stop projects like the ESL and make sure that fair competition is preserved. That there should be supporter interest and voices in clubs and a meaningful voice in clubs. There should be a fairer distribution of the wealth and sustainability in football, a greater flow of money throughout the game, whilst maintaining the competitive Premier League, which is essential not just to our country, but around the world to the fans who watch it. We should deal with the societal issues and tackle the major issues like racism, homophobia, LGBTQ issues. It's ridiculous that I'm still seeing statements from football stakeholders about we don't tolerate racism whilst not doing a damn thing about it. It's ridiculous. There should be greater consequence and they should implement education. Simple as that. And that's everyone throughout the game. That season ticket holders at football clubs, it should be compulsory um, education, education programmes that can be delivered through the wealth in the game for all Premier League fans, administrators, people who work in football clubs, players, and we all have to be educated and we all have to buy into it. I mean, I'm a football club owner. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I think that anybody who fears independent regulation must have something to hide. I, I, I don't understand why any football club owner would have any problem with opening their books, disclosing their wages, um, understanding their share structures. Why would I have a problem with that? I see basically the regulator asking questions of football to do things in a fairer and better manner. And they know what to do. They know they should pass more money down through the pyramid. Is it right that the top of the championship has £6 million and the bottom of the Premier League has 100 No. So should we just close the gap a little bit? Yeah, that's fine. No problem. I, honestly, I, I really don't see this as being something of a risk. And if you think football is running correctly today, then you accept status quo. This risk that it could a regulator could come in and do a worse job on racism... Um, or a worse job on distribution of funds. They're not going to ask the Premier League to give less money to the rest of football. So how can they actually you know, mess this up? But those supporters are going to have a huge role in championing the interests of fans on boards and making sure that they are an early warning system when things go wrong. They, I think they're going to need a lot more support. And we used to have an organisation called Supporters Direct, which has become part of the FSA. So how do we make sure that that support is there for them? Uh, and make sure that fans are able to have a participatory role, not just standing from the outside shouting and screaming when things go wrong. I think we've got to be very wary of a very, a very simplistic answers as though put someone on the board without, without anything around it, just put somebody on the board, a fan on the board is, is, you know, is a panacea. That could be, if that's not, if the framework around that isn't right, then I completely share the, the view that that could be something which is being used or you know, a tokenistic approach or used to sort of try and divide and rule between different groups of fans and that sort of thing. So it's going to be it's going to be more fundamental than that. And it does come back to that culture point that Alison was talking about. I don't really see how clubs lose from being a bit more open and transparent about the challenges they face, why they face them, how they're planning on addressing them, taking the views of the people that will always be there. The supporters will always be there. 